Armin and Levac, 104.5, the team, 104.5, the team.com. And the new college football rankings are out. And to help us figure them out, Heather Dinich, college football analyst with ESPN and ESPN.com. <coughs> And Heather, this was potentially the most controversial top four that we could have had thus far. Did the committee, selection committee, get it right this time? They did. Uh, I don't have uh, too many too many questions about their top four. I was a little bit surprised, to be honest with you, that they didn't go with Oregon at number one, and that's based on Jeff Long's comments from a week ago. The committee chair last week justified Oregon ahead of Florida State because of what Oregon had done to this point, which was three wins over ranked opponents. If you look at their wins against Michigan State at home, the Spartans only have two losses. Against Utah on the road, they've got three losses. And at UCLA, which also only has two losses and is uh, now the front runner in the Pac-12 South. So I thought Oregon's resume, the entire body of work, a phrase they like to use often there with the committee, outweighed one big win. Now, granted, it's the best win in the country right now by Alabama, but I think it's very interesting and revealing, and that goes to show that the eye test holds a lot of weight with the committee because, according to Jeff Long, Alabama is the most complete team in the country, and and I, I don't have a problem with that argument. So that's what saved Mississippi State from falling out of the top four, is that their loss is to Alabama? Right, yes, and they, uh, their, their entire body of work, quote-unquote, um, when you look at the rest of their resume and what they've done um, with, uh, with wins, um, I'm looking at uh, against Auburn, that was a big one that they liked, and Texas a and I, I question that one, but the committee, the committee still likes that. They like that resume. Five, six, seven, a, a little bit, you know, could have been debated. Heather Dinich, ESPN college football analyst of ESPN.com on Twitter as well, at CFB Heather. And Heather, as we look at number five, TCU, number six, Ohio State, number seven, Baylor, and then you get into the old miss of the world. The decision for TCU to be five and Ohio State six, your thoughts on that? It was the exact same order that I had my top 25 going into this week. Hey, girl. Um, <laughs> so here's what I think. I think at the end of the day, come the last game of the season, Baylor's going to be ranked ahead of TCU. If both teams continue to win out, I don't think that the committee is going to be able to ignore that head-to-head when it's all said and done. Ohio State, I think, has the best chance of those bubble teams to get in. And to me, the reason is not only because of the way that um, JT Barrett is playing a quarterback and their offensive line, how, just how good they look, but they will have had wins then against Michigan State, against Minnesota, which is still ranked in the top 25. And if Wisconsin continues to win big, look good, and then Ohio State gets a win over them in the Big Ten title game, I think it would be really hard for the committee to ignore the Big Ten champs, even if they've got an 11-1 and Mississippi State sitting out there. So, so my, uh, my overall conspiracy theory that somehow, someway, Ohio State will find their way into this four-team playoff is going to come to fruition? Go with it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I do. I like the Buckeyes' chances a lot. They, I mean, clearly they've gotten so much better since that Week 2 loss at home to Virginia Tech, and the committee would have to consider, obviously, the injury to Braxton Miller. I mean, that was, it was JT Barrett's second game as a starter in his career, only his first home game there in that role. And if you look at what he's done um, against the past two ranked opponents, he's got six touchdowns. I mean, he's played at his best when it's mattered the most. Is there? But they have to blow out Indiana and Michigan in order to, to stay where they are, though, right? They, I mean, they can't just eke out a win and be safe. No, look at T. I mean, well... That's a good question because a lot of people probably would have said that about TCU because they struggled in that win against Kansas, and they're still sitting there at number five. So maybe not. But, you know, they are looking at how dominant teams are against their opponents in these wins. So it's going to be a factor. Heather Dinich of ESPN.com, ESPN College Football Analyst, with us on 104.5 The Team with Armin in the back. You're home for New York sports. What about, about Georgia winding up at number 10, Heather? What did you think of Georgia at 10? Ah, uh, don't get me started. Don't get me started on Georgia. I don't understand how they're a top-10 team after they've lost to Florida and South Carolina. Florida just fired their coach for crying out loud. South Carolina is not even in the conversation anymore. Um, I, clearly, a big win matters more to the committee than bad losses. They they beat Auburn 34-7. to I understand that. Auburn was ranked number 9 at the time, so they're valuing that a lot, but... 
I have a hard time justifying that considering the teams that they've lost to. And they're not even the, they're not even leading the SEC East right now. Missouri has to lose in order for Georgia to win that division. I, I got it. her started. I looked at her Twitter. I'm like, oh, she's going to love this one. <laughs> <laughs> Poking the bear. That's, That's cool. Right. That's Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> Heather, one of the biggest critiques of this new system is that, you know, there's a chance that, uh, you know, an SEC division, a conference could dominate and have, you know, two, three, even four teams in there if everything fell their way. Uh, does that bother you at all that it's not going to be, there's a chance you don't get representation from the, the Power Five? Uh, no, I, I think they, they're doing it right. Get the best four teams in there. Look, if you've got a two-loss Pac-12 South champ that goes in and upsets Oregon, I would rather see an 11-1 Mississippi State team playing in the top four than than that two-loss Pac-12 South team. Um, so I, I think at the end of the day, college football fans want the best teams and the best matchups. And while there could be some disagreements, and of course there's going to be debates along the way, I think in the end, the the college football playoff committee is going to reward them with the best games. Heather Dinich, VSPN.com. And Heather, we hear all the time about the SEC bias. But to me, it's not a bias. It's the fact that the SEC is the best the, the best uh, conference in the country. And that weighs more. And, and the opponents that they play weighs more. And so if the two best teams are SEC teams and they are in the top four, that's just how it works out. I mean, that, that should be the thinking, should it not? It should, yes, but <clears throat> just to play devil's advocate here, Please do. consider consider the fact that okay, Alabama definitely has the best win in the country right now over okay. Mississippi State, but every single every other team that they've beaten has at least four losses. So by ranking them number one, that shows that the committee really has a high regard for the rest of those teams and the the overall depth of the SEC because LSU is not even ranked anymore. The decreasing value of those wins, it doesn't seem like it decreases that much in the committee's eyes as far as the SEC is concerned. So would you call that a bias then? No, I wouldn't call okay. I wouldn't okay. call it a bias because it's um, when you actually watch these games and, and look at the way these teams play, uh, and especially Mississippi State. I mean, Alabama was in control of that game, but it wound up being, what, a five-point game? Right. Um, so clearly there's, uh, there's not that much separation between all of these teams. And look, the reality of the situation is, is that every team can't finish with one or two losses. It's just not going to happen. So at, at some point you have to start saying, okay, well, you know what, maybe even West Virginia isn't that bad of a team. Oklahoma's not a bad team. <laughs> They're going to lose some games. Uh, all of these conferences are, are more than two teams deep, and I think that's a good thing for college football. Heather, uh, what are your feelings on any win over Texas Tech should just be Come vacated? Come on, stop it! Because they're just a terrible, terrible po- program. Come on, guns up! Did, uh, did, did you steal their defensive si- signals too? <laughs> oh man, they, I didn't know they played defense. Eighty-two <laughs> points in a game. I thought that was the. I, I thought I was looking at the basketball scores, and then I realized that the uh, men's hoop season hadn't started yet. As the uh. proudest alum in the country, I do have to say <laughs> that I am a little embarrassed at the moment with Texas Tech. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, there's, uh, there might be a few reasons to be, but that's okay. We'll, we'll save that conversation for another day. Well, Heather, can't we change hand signals? Like, can't you do that during a game? <laughs> Is that really that difficult? I, I, that's, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. You know, I mean, it seems like a simple solution, right? They, they stole our signals. I thought you can change that, like, I don't know, the next snap. I don't know why you have to do, like, a big, well, at the end of the season, we're going to change the signal. I don't know if I would call out Mike Smith publicly. That dude's nuts. That's true. Last time we did that, he called in, so you never know. Heather Dinich of ESPN uh, and ESPN College Football. Uh, you can catch her on Twitter, at CFB Heather. Heather, you do a great column that LeVac and I love to highlight every single week. Uh, if the season ended today, what the Bulls would look like. What bowl games jump out to you if the season ended today that fascinates your interest? Ah, uh, well, I think I think the Fiesta Bowl would be a good one with Baylor against UCLA. Um Wow. What do you think about Georgia against undefeated Marshall? Um, <clears throat> that's kind of interesting. Um, and I like TCU against Ohio State in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic as well. I think, I think that would be interesting. Of all the teams for Florida State to try and avoid, I think they should try and avoid Alabama and Ohio State as far as dangerous ones. Um, that could be unfavorable matchups for them. Heather Dinich of ESPN. You can catch her on ESPN every Saturday, keeping you updated with the college football playoff and who the final four teams will be this year at CFB Heather on Twitter. Heather, like I said, we follow you every week on ESPN.com. You do a great job, and we really appreciate you spending time with us today. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for having me on.